<laughs> right, okay. <laughs> We've had to do this before. <laughs> oh, gosh. The boys in the band. In a new order of light. I'm going to start with Ian. I'm going to start with Ian. Ian is kind of like the dad of the band. He's, he's kind of like the bedrock of the band, really. He's the oldest member of the band, and he's like our, not like the dad, but he's, he's the responsible one. Ian, Ian's the band's mum, really. Uh, um, whenever, whenever any of us are, are really in a fix, he's, he's the one to, 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 to phone you up and help you sort it out. He looks after the financial stuff. He's the one that always calls up and checks things are okay when he knows something's not quite right. You know, he's, he's the one that seems to look out for everybody, which is really nice. Um, and he's also a lot of fun. You know, uh, an incredible musician, uh, the most lyrical drummer that I've ever uh, played with. Um, very, very creative, uh, an incredible sense of humor. Has always um, been the go-to person for sorting stuff out or if you just want to talk to him about anything and um, he is a really thoughtful very musical drummer actually most musical drummer that I know and, um, and a, a lovely chap. Ian's probably um, the person in the band I've become closest to in a lot of ways over the years mainly because he's bailed me out of so many situations <laughs> I've got myself into. <laughs> But sleeping in his spare room on the odd occasion. And the most sensible one of the lot of us when it comes to money, because, um, you know, Ian's, as well as being the drummer, is a financial controller. It's the reason that we're not all bankrupt by now. He's a very caring man and a brilliant drummer. Um, and a vampire. Mark is slightly eccentric, I would say, in a very good way, in a very kind of English way, I think. Although he's Irish, so maybe that doesn't work. He's bonkers, but in a, in a caring way, in a good way. Um, he's actually very musical and um, good fun. Very different, we're like chalk and cheese. In, in many ways. Um, brilliant, brilliant. Um, he has a different window on the world, I think. And he has a different window on music to some extent. And that comes out in, in the stuff that he writes. Again, incredibly creative musician. Um, He's, he's got one of those brains that just tends to fly off in a million different directions sometimes, which can, if you catch him on a good day, you get some incredible things uh, from him. Occasionally, he'll, he'll be guilty of not listening to what you're doing. So, you know, like Pete and I are getting our vibe together and Ian's showing in and there's these little magical things happening and, and, and Mark will be over in the corner and he'll be you're not really listening, so you'll be going meep, meep, bop, 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 flicking through sounds, playing something in the wrong key, in the wrong time. And, and we kind of look at each other and go, <laughs> but when he does come back to us uh, and he does join in, uh, again, it's part of that amazing musical chemistry uh, that I think we, we inspire each other. Um, uh, he's a very intelligent guy. Um, he is crazy, but in a good way most of the time. Steve Roddery is, he's the quiet one in the band, I'd say, but he's also always calm. Um, whenever there's a fight brewing, he's the one that calms everybody down um, and seems to come up with some great parts with no effort, which is really annoying. Steve Rothery, I would say, is a kind of quiet, thoughtful chap. Not unassuming, because he's not unassuming, but he... He sort of just quietly gets on and does what he wants to do. He can be stubborn, Steve, Let's, and I'm sure we all can, actually. And I'm sure we all rub each other up the wrong way. But he can, you know, he'll, he'll, if he doesn't hear a place for him to play, he'll just sit in the corner and, and sit it out and you'll be thinking, why, why, why isn't Steve playing, you know? But it's simply because 
he doesn't see where he can add anything. Rodgers is, in it, it, well, I mean, I suppose everybody's eccentric, aren't they, when they're in bands? Rodgers is quite eccentric in the sense that he's quite insular, he's very serious, but at the same time, very personable. Steve's the sort of guy that you can actually, um, if you're in a bit of trouble, you can call Steve up and uh, he'll be there for you. So, you know, that's, that's uh, a nice, uh, it's nice to know. I think Steve's somebody who does what he does really, really well. And when he's at his best, he's utterly, utterly brilliant. An incredible musician, a lovely human being. You know, we've, we've kind of gone on really well for a very long time, both on a musical and a chemistry um, and on a personal level, you know, I was his best man, he was my best man, etc. Uh, he's just a joy to play with. Um, you know, when I'm trying to formulate an idea, when I've just got the ghost of an idea, it's like a telepathy. He's on it there and he's, he's kind of moving the bass and suggesting. And it's like supporting your creative process. That's the only way I could describe it. Um, and it's, yeah, it's magical. And so he's, he's probably the, the person that I have the strongest creative telepathy with. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lovely human being, really. Consummate musician. Brilliant, brilliant musician. Um, brilliant musical mind. Great bass player. Um, a bit, bit sort of dreamy. Pete is the musical one in the band, I'd say. He's the one that's when you're trying to come up with musical ideas or develop a musical idea, Pete's always the one that adds something really special. So he's a great supporting role, you know. He's the one who's always enthusiastic about everything, even if it, you're thinking, this isn't really much of a good idea. Pete would be like, no, no, it's great, and, you know, gets you, gets you into it. I think it's well documented with, with Pete, um, my partner in crime, really, the rhythm section. Um, Pete is... Uh, He's a 24-hour musician, and he's he's always willing to. If you you want to play, Pete will. You know, I could call him at two in the morning, I think, and you'd probably say, "Yep, yeah, I'll be there. Let's do it." That takes us onto the singer, Steve. Um, what can you say? Well, I suppose you could you start off by saying he saved the band, really. You know, after Fish left, and we were kind of flailing around trying to find a replacement. Um, very positive about the music that we were still writing and the chemistry between the four of us, but looking for someone to fill those very big shoes. Um, and Steve came along um, and did that in a way that we could never have imagined, really. Uh, and didn't just replace Fish as a, as a vocalist and a, and a lyricist, but also added an extra musical dimension to what we do because he's you know he's a very fine keyboard player and writer himself and I think that additional musical chemistry really helped and still helps now. Really thoughtful, um, great musician and uh, he's passionate about what he does and I think that's uh, that's a good trait. Steve H he's he's the artist in the band you know <laughs> he's the one that that, um, and he's like the band's conscience as well. He's the one that's always on a crusade about some, some injustice in the world. So, um, you know, he's the one that's always going, hey guys, I've just got involved in this thing in, 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 you know, in the Gaza Strip. There's a school that needs help or, the, you know, he's the one that's um, always asking us to, to help out with something. In some ways, Steve's more of, of, the, of the way that Pete and I work in, in terms of, um, feeling something and understanding how to make it move forward. I'm, I mean, I get on really well with Steve, actually. A delightful chap. Really, um, really talented. I mean, they're all talented. That's why we're all together. But um, it's great. I love just sometimes just watching Steve sit at a piano and play and sing. Um, he can be um, a little bit kind of feisty. Now and again, once if he wants, you know, really wants to get his own way with something, 
if he thinks this definitely is what should be do we should be doing. I think he's grown as a lyricist in a in a big big way actually. I mean, he's a singer, so that comes with um, the additional stress uh, and pressure that uh, that all singers uh, face. Be it you know the uh, the person that people want to speak to on tour. So at the time when you really need to have a break, you then you're taken to some radio station or TV station or speak to a journalist, cut to the somebody big shot at some important magazine or paper. And he's a person that when he goes out on that stage, he gives his everything. You know, I go out, I play the guitar and I, I give my all in a different kind of way in my complete and utter focus on making every note I play as good and as powerful, as emotional as possible. Steve goes there and, and reenacts all the emotions he felt when he, he wrote some of, some of these sometimes quite personal words. Um, you know, and he's still got an incredible voice and, and he's the ultimate performer. The thing about the, all of the boys in Marillion actually, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to, to talk about them as individuals. Um, I just think the underlining thread that they all have is that they're all very kind and thoughtful people. And, um, you know, we all have our moments, we all have our strange little quirks. I mean, one of the things I will say about all of the members of the band is that one of the reasons why we're together, because we're often asked why we're together, because we get on so bloody well. I mean, we really are very good friends. So, you know, we have had our disagreements and we've fallen out in the past, but um, we've all learned to kind of deal with our eccentricities. I mean, they're all bastards, you know, really, but, but in a good, caring way. They're all passionate about what they do, and uh, they all don't mind making fun of themselves. We're just all incredibly lucky to, to have each other, really, and, and sometimes you fall out because it's like a family, and you bitch and you moan, and um, there'll be things that drive you crazy about each other. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, we're here all working together, enjoying each other's company, creating great music 32 years later. Uh, and that just says it all, really. Thanks for watching Marillion's official YouTube channel. Remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification thingamajig so you're the first to know when we upload new content.